one, Tarnation! Uh, I meant to do that. Howdy folks, this is Apple Geek, and here we are with another episode of the final season of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. This is episode 5. I know absolutely nothing about this, so without any further ado, let's give it a watch. Starting now. Derpy! Ooh, meal delivery. Twilight, Mail's here! Aww, aww, aww. Are you alright? Is, is this good? We just had a really heavy delivery today. Is it a deluxe set of special edition is... ogres and Ubliance figurines that I'm totally surprised by and haven't been hinting that I need forever? Really? Oh, it's for Twilight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Huh, it's from Princess Celestia. Okay, so per oh. <sighs> So is this. Okay. Really? She couldn't have put it into the box? <laughs> My dearest Twilight, I have been conducting a thorough cleaning of the castle, and I came across a few items of yours in your old room. I thought you might want them back. I didn't even know I'd left anything. Oh, what do we ha Aw, look! Remember this? What's that a picture of? It's the macaroni picture frame Cadence helped me make when I was a filly. Oh! <laughs> Who could forget a masterpiece like that? <laughs> what else? What Star Swirl figure! <laughs> credit report on the impediments of using magic in everyday chores. Ha! Still so true! <laughs> is my Smash no. Fortune comic in there? I've been looking for that for years. Oh boy. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> clock. Wow. Oh no, oh no, oh no! Hey? What's wrong? It just looks like is that a library lock? book she forgot to return? Exactly! It belongs to the Canterlot Library. That means it's... Yep. Tardy! <laughs> Wow, I, I'm... <laughs> I'm not really sure where this is going, but th I think we're going to see another Twilight freak out here. Um, Derpy, anytime she's on screen talking, is absolutely amazing. I'd hope this would be her episode. Clearly not, but... Mm, oh well. <sighs> anyway. By the way, I found a new pear flavor Red Bull. This stuff's awesome. Just wish I had Apple to go with it. Oops, not anymore. A perfect <laughs> oh, I've never turned in a book even a minute late. And this one is years. Overdue since I left for Ponyville. Nice way to not put a time frame around that. <laughs> the point of no return. Oh no. <laughs> Make sure you bring this one back on time. We've got a long waiting list of ponies who can't wait to read it. I promise I won't let you down. Oh, no. Oh, of course you won't, dear. If there's any pony I can trust to take care of a book, it's you, Twilight Sparkle. After all, you still hold the best book follower title. Wow. We're really laying this on thick. I hope I An old copy of predictions and oh, flashback! Well, it was a gift for Moon. Season one, deja vu. Oh, Spike, you know we don't have time for that sort of thing. Oh, that's what happened to it. Dusty Page's prided herself that no books were damaged. Dusty Page, interesting. And I failed her. I failed myself. I take it we're going to Candlelight. Uh, yeah. Right now. <laughs> Sooner the better, I guess. Yeah. Just get it over with, man. <laughs> really? Uh, why are we hiding? Don't you want to return your book? Yes, but what if some pony sees me in there? I'm the princess of friendship. Everywhere I go, ponies recognize me. I'll stick out like a sore hoof. Do they know? Twilight Spark we haven't really seen that too Stop much. The presses. <laughs> <laughs> what 
of dusty pages revokes my library card. That's not gonna happen. Don't you already have most of those books in your collection at home? Yes, but the ones in there have a special Canterlot library in East Mill. You sniff books? <laughs> you don't? Wow, okay. <laughs> I used to live in a library. If I'm not a good example of proper book borrowing behavior, then what kind of princess am I? One that makes mistakes like every pony else. Trust me, once you return that book, you'll feel way better. Thanks, Spike. Let's go. Oh, hey there. Uh, I forget what her name is, but yeah. <sighs> New librarian. <laughs> I have a book to return. Really? Princess Twilight. Yeah! So good to see you. <laughs> you know the cutie mark on the bag kind of gives it away. From the new release section. <gasps> Is that the new edition of Moon Curve Seven Theories on Bending Time? I have been waiting for the release and. Oh. Uh, I mean, uh, no books today. Yeah, I saw that uh, Salvador Dali thing in there. I think it was but Salvador Dali. I need to speak with Dusty Pages about a <clears throat> sensitive matter. Yeah. Dusty, uh, mm? <laughs> Dusty Pages. She's retired. Head librarian. She's worked here forever. Exactly. I'm sorry, Princess. I don't know her. Now, was there some other way I can help the library's best book borrower? Oh no. <laughs> that sounds like she's voiced by Tabitha. <laughs> Just ask her where to return an overdue book. It's no big deal. It happens all the time. Not to me, it doesn't. Nice maniac comic. <sighs> fine. Fine! Oh no, I didn't even think about the late fine. <laughs> this song will probably cost a thousand bits. Oh no! She, I mean, we have an overdue book. <laughs> well, that's no problem at all. In fact, it happens all the time. <laughs> See? <sighs> I'll just find it in the card catalog. Uh, number 18905. Oh, got it. <laughs> oh, <Really>? wow. <laughs> I haven't seen a book this late in, well, ever. ever. <laughs> you need to go and see First Folio in the grossly overdue book return office for ponies who should know better. Oh! Nobody punches with those names, do you? <laughs> and that office would be in the basement. Because of the shame. <laughs> nice face plant. Whoa. Oh no. Looks like no pony ever goes down here. That's no pony back there. except undependable what, what's rule breakers who deserve all the horrors this hallway holds. So those hey, lightning bolt signs. Dragon companions. Uh hey, it looks like first folio left a note on the door. Abandon hope all ye who enter. <laughs> <laughs> Out to lunch on restaurant row. Guess we'll have to try back later. Oh, no. boy. I can't wait another minute to return this book. In the time it took us to get there, I racked up another... 17 bits in late fees! Uh, We're really? going to lunch. Good, because I'm starving. <sighs> oh, you mean to find first folio? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Can we at least get takeout? <gasps> oh! Tell me if you see any librarians. Nice callback. Twilight, Spice up your life. Three other restaurants already. And my late finds are already up another 26 more bits. <laughs> Good to see Saffron Masala again? Writer, we're ready to order. Oh, uh, uh, I got uh, three samosas, uh, two curry specials. Do you think that's enough for the two of us? Hmm. Well, I would probably order some non wreck Spike! <laughs> sounds great. Twilight, <laughs> is that you? Dancer! <gasps> Moon Dancer! I'm just visiting. No real reason. You know. Well, it's good to see you. I, I'm just meeting my friend. First, I wondered. Lunch. Do you want to join us? First folio, yes. I mean, thank you, Princess Twilight. Oh did no! You know? <laughs> did you know your picture is still up in our library? Yeah, yeah no public shame right in front of one of her friends. Yeah, I was hoping I could talk to Dusty Pages about that. Oh, Dusty Pages left the library moons ago. I, Didn't you know? Mm -mm. Oh, I heard she was forced to leave. What? So sad. She loved the library. Wait, forced Wh to leave? No, no. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. She had a perfect librarian record. No. Until one careless pony didn't return a book. Ruined it all. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, do I like... Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you excuse me? The, 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 um... That's why you only order spicy if you can take it. <laughs> Twilight, what's wrong? <laughs> Dusty Pages isn't working at the library anymore because this I... This is highly implausible. <laughs> I think I got her fired! Oh, this is going from bad to worse. Twilight, the library <laughs> is stuck up ponies. Change of plans. We're going to Dusty's house. She used to invite me over for tea all the time. Oh what no! What about your late feet? They're not as important as making things right. Wait. Oh. So you're not gonna return the book? No. Yeah, eventually. It's my fault she lost her job. So if I give her the book, she can get her old job back. Yes, yeah, so I call Gabe back or not call it. Minuet It'll back there. Everything. Oh, it's lemon. Uh, lemon drops, lemon hearts, whatever. It's <sighs> really many fences cameos here. Sign? Nay. No sales <laughs> oh, I'm not selling anything. Flim and Flam, no not welcome here. Either. No surveys, no petitions, no free literature. <laughs> Does that cover it? <laughs> no problem. I'm just looking for some pony who used to live here. I'm pretty sure this was her house. Dusty pages? Yes. Hold oh, on. Where is she got she that is? Silver something. Shoal, seas, surfer, whatever. Silver shoal! When you find her, give her this. Oh. It's been stacking up okay. for years. And tell her to change her address. Wow. Okay. So, we finally get to see several, several uh, silver shoals or whatever, whatever it's called. <laughs> door to door. What? Okay. Is that sil silver my oh? What? Why would you be asking? The Did I miss something there? Community for I'll the go back and look at that later. Years. This has to be it. I hope so. It's the last silver spot on the map we haven't looked. Hmm. So is she working at a oh, library oh, this here? This place is terrible. I know. There's not a single bookshelf in sight. Oh. Is this like retirement you? home? <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. How may I help you? Do you have a resident named Dusty Pages? Oh, yes. Her apartment is in the next complex, ground floor. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I can't believe that my carelessness sent her here. The she could be happily surrounded by millions of wonderful smelling books. You realize that might just be a you thing, right? <laughs> um, you, 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 you missed it. Thank you. There she is. Here we go. Moment of reckoning? Is she not home? Hmm. <laughs> really? No! <laughs> She's bound to be back soon. Maybe we should just wait here. No, we are fixing this now. This place isn't that big. We can Twilight, find her. patience. Sorry to interrupt oh. your plein air painting. But we're looking for Dusty Pages. Have you seen her? Sure have. What is that, uh, Apple Rose, I think is her name? And where have and you seen her? <laughs> she had to leave early to get to her Bangby de Tea session. Which is right before she leaves the woodworking class with me. And then she's on to windsurfing. Oh, and don't forget theater <laughs> rehearsal. Dusty's playing the lead role. Wow. Again. Oh. Then there's her band practice later. Thank you. Wow, Dusty sounds like one busy pony. Oh, she's just filling her days with distractions to cover the pain of losing the best job ever. But not for long. Really? It... <laughs> Any applesauce? Oh, that, the apple. Man, all these old ponies. So many cameos. 
<sighs> what? She is quite the elusive one, isn't she? <laughs> Isn't she? <laughs> wow. <laughs> These old timers sure know how to live. <laughs> oh, it's all waterlogged now. What? I have questions. <laughs> Dusty pages, finally! Come on, Spike. Wait. Wow. Pretty happy up there. <laughs> She'll be a lot happier when I deliver the good news that she can go back to working at the library. Oh, hey. Five, every pony. Oh, Twilight Sparkle, my stars. <sighs> It's so wonderful to see you. What are you doing here? I've been looking all over a Okay, Cassie. now we're have the moment of reckoning. I need to tell you something. Well, you brought my mail. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yes, we did. But that's not why but? we're here. I let you down. And I can't forgive myself until I set things right. I don't remember you doing anything wrong. You told me to take special care of a book I checked out. It's all going to be a big misunderstanding, library, isn't it? And I never brought it back. <gasps> it was you that had that book out? The Apes. one that broke my perfect record? Uh-oh. But now you can bring it to Canterlot Library and get your job back. Well, I don't want my job back. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't ever need to see that library again. Now, if you'll excuse oh. me, I have somewhere to be. Oh, Wow. Okay, there's a little more going on here than... Do you mind? <laughs> I don't understand. If Dusty Pages won't go back to Canterlot Library and explain everything, then she won't be able to get her job back. Even worse, her record will remain imperfect. And yours will, too? Well, mm. yeah, but that doesn't matter anymore. Really? Well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> oh no, Bits! The late finds! How much do I know? Oh, no. <laughs> An abacus, really? <laughs> uh, you don't want to know. Uh, A million bits. I would if I'd made things right A with Dusty. A million bits. I wish I knew why she won't go back. Why don't you ask her? She didn't seem to want to talk. You surprised her. And she probably had something else on her schedule. That thing is Pat. Come on. This is what true. What have you got to lose? Now that I've messed up this much, nothing. Mm. You're right, Spike. It's worth a try. Where do you think she went? Crochet? Bingo? <laughs> a squishy fruit food fight tournament? <laughs> <laughs> hey, every pony, we come in. This is the best retirement home ever. Oh. <laughs> nice. Stop! We just want to talk to Dusty Pages for a moment. Please? Time out! Oh, fuck <laughs> Next time, you should rent gear. We're not actually here for the game. I the equivalent of paintball, basically. to talk to you about the library book. <sighs> this really means a lot to you, doesn't it? <sighs> mm-hmm. I know I ruined your life by not returning my book on time. And I will do anything I can to make it up to you. Even promise to never take a book out of the library again. If that's what it takes. <gasps> <laughs> wow. That is not the reaction we expected. Yeah, this Twilight, mm. dear, you've got it all backwards. I'm not upset with you. You're not? Mm? No. If I'm mad at any pony, it's me. Okay. Rest of the story, please. All those years I spent hiding away in that library, trying to be perfect. When your book never came in, I felt something exhilarating. What was it? Freedom. From books? From perfection. I was too stubborn to know when to call it quits. Oh. It took a mistake to make me realize that I wasn't living the life I wanted. 
You mean you weren't fired? You left the library because you wanted to? Twilight, your late book was the best thing that ever happened to me. Now I'm not afraid to try things I might fail at. In fact, sometimes oh, messing up teaches me wow. more than getting it right. You're sure you don't want to return it and get that perfect record back? <laughs> oh, good. It was a yellow one. You can still see the words. Well, that doesn't change the truth inside it. Wait, did you even read that thing? Actually, uh, no. I guess I didn't. Perfection. And the next part? The impossible pursuit. <laughs> oh, the irony! Was to look at earlier. <laughs> Your total late fees come to. However much it is, I'll cover it. Uh, do you have a monthly payment plan? Uh, don't you... Twenty-eight bits. Wait, what? Uh, that's it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Most ponies don't know a caps at a month. Probably because we don't tell them. <laughs> Thank you. Your account is back to normal. Although we will be taking down your best book borrower pick. Oh, oh well. Um, is that really necessary? <laughs> it just seems so permanent. <laughs> I mean, I did return the book, after all. Is there anyone that's still better than her, though? I mean... Letting the perfection go. <laughs> you want me to reshelve this for you? No. It's an old edition. We've already replaced it with a uh, new copy. <clears throat> In that case, can we keep it? It might be a good reminder to have a ramp. <laughs> sure. It's got a stain. Oh. That's what makes it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That, this is a good story. Is it Tip? Yep, it was Tabitha. Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> you know... This is kind of an interesting follow-up to um, fame and misfortune a little bit. You know, the old, you know, we're not flawless, we're work in progress. Hmm. Yeah, well, uh, as always, uh, I need to go collect my thoughts on this, rewatch and everything. Stay tuned, guys. I will be right back with my thoughts on this. All right. You know what? This was a great episode. The more I watch this, the, the more times I rewatch this, the more and more I like this episode. Quite frankly, I'm I'm convinced this is the best GM Barrow episode ever on this show. I'm I'm so happy that um, this being her last episode that we got to end on on this note. You know, it, it's interesting that the episode actually had a series premiere flashback because in many ways it felt an awful lot like a classic FIM episode from the earlier seasons of the show. It had a very strong and clear moral lesson and stayed on point with that throughout the story, not a lot of complicated story threads and whatnot. And, you know, honestly, it felt an awful lot like at the end of this, there should have been like a Dear Princess Celestia letter. I mean, it was it was just nice and, and very well executed, just very well on point, clear lesson, it was great. And, and uh, the story also perfectly captured, uh, you know, Twilight's adorableness that we all know and love, uh, yet also showed just exactly how much she has matured over the years and how she's starting to show the signs of being a great leader. Um, also, I think this is actually the first time we've ever had an episode that is focused entirely on Twilight without any involvement whatsoever from the rest of the main six and any of her friends. So that was a interesting you know, uh, perspective to, to see for once. Now to start with, we have a bit of a nostalgia trip, of course, with uh, for both Twilight and fans alike. Um, got a fantastic flashback scene showing us a little bit more of what Twilight was like back in uh, back at the beginning of FIM, including some recycled footage there from all the way back in season one, episode one. Uh, and you know, I noticed the production staff even uh, made sure that Twilight's uh, lighter purple magic aura color uh, that that she had back in the first season was used in in the new scenes for this flashback here. Very very nice attention to detail on that. Nice nice continuity. Uh, of course, that makes me question whether or not there's an actual in-universe explanation for that as well. Like, you know, that's why her aura color changed at all. Um, and I'm thinking maybe perhaps the aura color uh, changes as their magic power level grows, something like that. But ultimately, that's unimportant. It's just a minor curiosity. 
Um, oh, Twilight, of course, also pulled out a G1 Star Swirl figurine, <laughs> which is, of course, kind of a playful poke at, um, I, I think at least kind of a poke at how, you know, some fans of the older generations, like Gen 1 of My Little Pony, might come across some old uh, Gen 1 toys as they're cleaning out, uh, you know, boxes of stuff from their house or something, you know, things from their childhood. Um, you know, some would call this toyetic and complain about it. I'm sure there are people doing just that, but honestly, for me, it's just some well placed meta humor, which I always enjoy seeing. And of course, the nostalgia trip is a bit short lived because Twilight discovers horror upon horrors, a long forgotten library book, which completely ruined her perfect record as the best borrower at the Canterlot Library. I do honestly kind of wonder why they had to take a picture down, but, um,. You know, I, I felt like that mark wouldn't necessarily have, you know, tarnished a record to that degree. Like, is there somebody actually better than her? But Mark got to thinking about it. You know, Moondance has probably got her beat. She's probably also got a perfect record. So there, there's that. But again, you know, again, rather unimportant detail in the grand scheme of things. So phase one of this episode uh, produces a rather typical Twilight freakout, slightly reminiscent of past events such as Lesson Zero. Um, but it never really got anywhere near that bad. I honestly, I thought she handled herself much better in this situation than she would have in in the past. And despite trying to not make a public scene, it seems that she had resigned herself to the fact that she had made the mistake. It had happened, and there was no changing that. And all she could do now was return the book as quickly as possible in order to clear her name and make amends by paying the necessary late fees. But then, of course, she finds out that her failure to return the book may very well have ruined the life of another pony, one that she likely was very good friends with, and knowing how Twilight was back then, perhaps one of very few friends she actually had at all. And of course, it does stand to reason that, like, why on earth would this librarian have gotten fired over one, one single book return failure that doesn't really track, but... Honestly, given Twilight's state of mind in this, and in her, you know, the way she jumps to conclusions about things like this, it's understandable that she wasn't really thinking straight at that point. And just like in Amending Fences, uh, once again we see Twilight kind of haunted by the, the fallout of her rapid departure from Canterlot. Uh, on that note, it was fun to see all of, uh, all of her friends from Amending Fences uh, make cameo appearances in this, this episode, um, including Moondancer, who even got a few more speaking lines after all of this time. I am curious as to whether she's actually you know, been making use of Twilight's study or not, especially now that it seems like Celestia is uh, cleaning that out, but uh, again, minor detail. So anyway, uh, Twilight then put aside her own concerns about her tarnished record and set out to find Dusty Pages to try and help her get her job back, not realizing, of course, that she had no desire to actually go back to work at that library. And, you know, the, the speed and ease with which Twilight set aside her own personal pride in order to right a wrong just blew me away. Uh, you know, because this, this shows significant maturity on Twilight's part, especially for, you know, something that's so near and dear to her heart, namely books and libraries and librarians. After all, she was a librarian herself for a long time. You know, Celestia very recently said that a great leader is willing to admit when a mistake has been made and has the courage to make it right. At this point, it's pretty clear that whether she realizes it or not, Twilight has done very well in fulfilling this expectation on multiple occasions. Now, and I also noticed several other moments in here where Twilight showed a lot of restraint in preventing herself from completely freaking out or even lashing out in anger or you know, in frustration at some of the, the ponies in Silver Stables. And, you know, that meaning she's improving on getting control of her own emotions and keeping a level head in order to gracefully deal with the situation. You know, I spent a good chunk of the last two commentaries talking about things that Twilight will need to, to do to prepare herself for the role of ruler of Equestria, and already I'm seeing her make great strides in this regard. It's because of this is why I truly believe that she is nearly ready to take over for Celestia and Luna. All that said, though, the, the story wasn't so much about making amends for past mistakes as it was dealing with the trap of perfectionism. Of course, we're all well aware of how much of a perfectionist Twilight is. Some of her, uh, or her ideology includes uh, some concepts such as, if it's worth doing it all, it's worth doing right. If there's a rule book for it, I will study it in order to make sure I do it perfectly. If there's no rule book for it, I will invent one. <laughs> And if I fail at any task, the world is basically doomed. <laughs> you 
you know, and in a lot of the cases that we've seen, it's more her personal world that's doomed, not necessarily the whole of Equestria. And a lot of the pressure she was under was self-inflicted because she couldn't bear the thought of letting down her teacher, Celestia, the pony who she idolized more than any other. That's what gave us moments like Lesson Zero, and even her unwillingness to give up when trying to, uh, to hatch Spike's dragon egg back when she was a filly. But these days, it really is becoming more about Equestria as a whole, the, you know, the safety of Equestria and whatnot, which, of course, adds a lot of pressure on her to continue trying to be perfect. Twilight has a very good heart, and she truly desires to be friends with everyone and to live out and share all the lessons that she's learned, which is why she started her friendship school. But along with that, I think she's scared to death that, given her enormous level of responsibility, she will end up making a mistake at some point that will result in uh, serious harm coming to someone. She's probably scared that she wouldn't be able to live with the guilt of any of her mistakes resulting in any of her friends being hurt. And I think this is a big part of why she continues to freak out as badly as she does whenever something bad happens. Now that said, there's even more to it with Twilight, in that she's let her perfectionism get a little out of control. Now it's certainly not wrong, it's not wrong to want to strive for perfection, and I would even say that, that that's better than, um, it's better to do that than to become apathetic. However, you can swing too far to the other extreme as well. Uh, Twilight, due to both her, you know, her personal pride, just, you know, general personality, and also her fears, has pushed herself to the limit in many areas, including academics, organizational skills, even learning friendship lessons. By doing so, she has set the bar very high for herself, both in terms of her own sense of accomplishment and in terms of others' expectations for her. Because she does so many things so well and so consistently, others tend to expect her to continue to perform at that level, meaning she's now stuck in a trap where she doesn't want to let either herself or anyone else down. Of course, she has let others down many times, and she's apologized and made amends for those mistakes. But that probably just made her all the more determined to push herself to never make any mistakes ever again, which frankly is an impossible achievement, and only sets herself up to fail again. And actually, it's kind of ironic that Twilight's own attempts to achieve perfection are actually causing her to make even more mistakes than she might otherwise have done. <laughs> And everyone makes mistakes. No matter how much we try to learn from our mistakes and improve ourselves, we will continue to make mistakes, be it the same ones again, because we don't always just learn a lesson and perfectly, you know, practice that lesson from that point forward, you know. Sometimes we got to learn the same lesson many times. Or we may, may make a lot of new, new mistakes too. There's always another page, another chapter in the book of life and more opportunities for mistakes. Of course, it doesn't mean we should uh, uh, we should just give up and not even bother trying to improve. Uh, mistakes are how we learn and grow as individuals. Just because we make mistakes doesn't mean we aren't growing. It just means we have more opportunities to grow even more. Now that Twilight hopefully understands this, perhaps she'll finally be able to let go of some of the, the things that have been holding her back. You know, if you're too much of a perfectionist, it's... It's so easy to get into a rut where you're too afraid to actually try new things or take any risks and rather just stick to what you know because there's a much greater chance of you losing your, your image as being perfect. This is something that Dusty Pages learned after her own record of a perfect return rate was ruined. She realized that she'd been so caught up in her efforts to maintain this record that she had locked herself in that library away for far too long and didn't realize that she was missing out on so many other experiences that the world had to offer. Uh, even Twilight has been in this position at times, as we saw back in What About Discord, where she had spent so much time inside her castle needlessly reorganizing her entire library that she missed out on a lot of fun with her friends. And also in that episode, we saw that she was stuck thinking that it shouldn't be possible for her to be jealous of others because she's the princess of friendship, which is yet another example of how she thinks that because of the position that she's in, she needs to be perfect and will be viewed as a complete and utter failure if she doesn't maintain that image. Again, it's her own attempts to be perfect that are actually holding her back from truly living up to her potential. Now, another thing that we often fail to realize is that our mistakes can result in some very positive outcomes that can benefit both ourselves and others around us. You know, as, as Bob Ross once said, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. Of course, that doesn't necessarily apply to every situation. I mean, there's some pretty serious mistakes people make sometimes, but it certainly applies here. In the story, if Twilight 
hadn't made the mistake of forgetting to return that book all those years ago, then Dusty Pages might still be stuck at that library, still not knowing all the great things that she was missing out on. And I also have to wonder what Twilight's own life would look like today if she had actually read that book back when she first got it. If she had read it, maybe she wouldn't have ended up being stuck in her perfectionist routine, and that means she wouldn't have gone to live in Ponyville. And we saw back in Season 5 many different ways in which her not moving to Ponyville and meeting her friends there would have been very, very bad for Equestria. Assuming that to be a, you know, the possible alternative outcome, then it's definitely a good thing that she made that mistake of losing track of that book all that, that time ago. So, it's funny how, how mistakes, uh, you know, can be beneficial sometimes. And I, I have heard some comments about how Twilight's behavior in this episode supposedly contradicts what happened back in uh, Fame and Misfortune with the whole Flawless song and whatnot. Um, I, I don't have a lot of details on what those complaints were, but... I don't personally find that to be a, a, a conflict at all. You know, admitting that you're a flawed individual who makes mistakes and striving for perfection are really two entirely different things. Just because somebody is willing to admit that they make mistakes doesn't mean they stop trying to improve themselves or maintain their own personal standards. You know, that this was a matter of personal pride for Twilight, as she practically worships the library and wouldn't dream of ever breaking any library rules. So it's, it's really quite understandable that she would be upset in this situation. On, on, uh, on a side note, I'm, I'm very, very interested in that new book that uh, the librarian was showing, Twilight. Uh, the title of which was Moon Curves, Seven Theories on Bending Time. Lines of dialogue like this make me feel, to me, feel like obvious foreshadowing. Just as we saw with the, the storybook Twilight picked up in Season 7 that mentioned Grogar and Gusty the Great. Now that's come to fruition. I'm now predicting that before this season is done, we're going to ha see some kind of time travel adventure, very likely involving Grogar him, himself, you know, with the past and his bell and everything. I, I'm, I'm thinking something's going to happen. I just don't know exactly what. And also, the new pony name of Moon Curve sounds rather intriguing, and I suspect that might be a character that we will yet meet this this season. I kind of hope we do. Um, you know, and so far, no pony else other than Star Swirl has been known to work on any kind of time uh, travel spells or theory or anything. So this is indeed a very interesting development. But that aside, uh, there was another thing about that book. I noticed that it contained a drawing of the melting clock from the famous uh, painting The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali. Um, now, a, f a friend of mine directed me to a quote made by that famous artist. He said, Mistakes are almost always of a sacred nature. Never try to correct them. On the contrary, rationalize them, understand them thoroughly. After that, it will be possible for you to sublimate them. Now, to save you the trouble of finding a dictionary, to sublimate means to improve or refine something. In this context, it means that if you stop trying to erase your mistakes and instead accept that they were made and learn from them, you will be able to turn them into something much more valuable than the initial you know, negative outcome of that mistake. I don't know whether or not this quote was actually in the mind of whoever decided to insert the picture of the clock into that book, but regardless, those are very wise words and very relevant to the lesson that was uh, presented in this episode. And on, on that note, I would kind of like to offer uh, a little bit of an object lesson. You know, so just to give you a scenario, let's say you're angry about something and you, you lash out in anger. Oops, I'm sorry. To sorry, fix the can. No, I mean you. You can, you can do what you can. You can try and say, "Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry." Let me, let me, let me try and make that right. Let me, let me help you. You may have done, you know, repaired a little bit, but there's, there's still dents. There's still creases. The, it, the can will never be the same as it was when you started. This is a mistake. One example of a mistake. When you lash out at someone, you can say sorry, you can try to make amends, and, but what happened, happened. You can't undo, ever undo what happened. So that's why you say, okay, what caused me to 
make the mistake in the first place? And how do I make sure that it never happens again? Because I don't want to do that ever again. It, you know, even if it's something as as basic and utterly meaningless as like, oh, I misspelled the word. I need to go back and correct that. Sure, you can, especially if you're you know typing it on a computer, you can erase any trace that it was ever spelled wrong in the first place. But the mistake was still made, and you still had to spend the time to go back and correct it. So, mistakes are made. It's in the past. You can't change that. All you can do is learn from your mistakes, try to improve, and move forward. Learn from it. That's the key thing. Learn from it and move forward and keep growing. So, powerful lesson in this episode. It's, again, I, I like this episode more and more every time I rewatch this. So... Um, the season is off to an absolute fantastic start, very strong start. I love where things are going. Can't wait to see more. Thanks, for everyone, for watching with me, and I hope to see you again soon next time. Later.